What's going on everybody? Today at First Build, I'm making a World War II Russian Cossack Shashka Saber. This is a really awesome sword. We're gonna put one together. It's gonna be sweet. Check it out. 1095 and 15 and 20 80 CRV2. That's gonna be our core steel. We've got walnut for the handle and we got a big piece of brass that we're gonna have to forge down for the bolster. So first things first, we gotta make the Damascus. 32 layers. So we're gonna heat it up. We're gonna forge weld it. Let's go. So right now I've got my first weld set and I've got my billet of 32 layers. Fold that and then I need to draw it out on the power hammer. So I'm gonna have 64 layers. I'm going to cut in the ladders, make the Sam Mai, make a sword. So I have this piece of one and a half inch diameter brass and that's gonna work great for the bolster, but for the eagle's head on the backside, I need enough for the beak come down here. So what I'm going to do is cut off uh, more than I need and then I'm going to set it vertically in the press and condense the material down and then draw out the beak. This is 64 layers Damascus steel. What I need to do is cut in my ladder pattern. The first time I did this sword, the ladder was a little more spread out and the billet got more drawn out, so the ladders didn't really show. So this time, I'm gonna have a tighter pattern. Uh, and then once these cuts are in, I'm going to hammer this down to about half the thickness and then my jacket will be done. I'll put the core steel in and then we'll start banging out the sword. All right, so a lot of people probably not thinking about it, but this apron here, is actually really important when you're working big blue and you got slag flying off at you 100 miles an hour big chunks of scale or molten steel uh, you really don't want your body exposed and things like that will catch on your t-shirt burn right through and then you're doing the dance we don't want to do the dance we're gonna do the victory dance but we're not gonna do the, the, the hot dance you know so this Cossack Sabre build is really interesting because I want to do it almost the same as I did it before. I want it to be true to the original Super Championship sword. I really want to improve how the pattern pops on the sword, how the ratio of the San Mai comes together. I want to improve the length of the handle and the ergonomics of it, the fit and finish overall. I want to take it to a higher level than it originally was while keeping the spirit of the original sword. So here it is, this is the finished Samai Damascus billet. I MIG welded all the seams all the way around. That way I don't even have to use flux at all. There's no oxygen or anything that's gonna get in there where the weld is gonna happen. So now I'm just gonna heat it up to weld temperature, hit it a couple times on the press, make sure these welds are solid, and then we're gonna draw it out into a sword. All right, so I was just hammering the side of the billet and it totally split open in the center. 
it's like it wasn't welded together at all like just a huge I mean, it was clean the only thing I can think of is that I didn't let it get up high enough to a forge weld temperature. Um, I think I just got a little too hasty. So I put a bunch of flux in the opening. So I'm just going to go over this whole billet and just get it up as hot as I can get it right before it melts. Rehammer it and I hope those welds stick. I don't know. It's very surprising. So I'm kind of at a loss right now. So as you can see, we had a little whoopsie. I was able to flux it. I didn't see any oxide forming inside the weld and I closed it back up with a power hammer. Um, it seemed to work except for there's still a little tiny bit of splitting on the end of the billet. This is the tricky part about doing a bunch of forge welds is sometimes you gotta roll the dice, okay? Um, I can sort of make out the outline of the layers, which doesn't necessarily mean it's not forge welded, but it's still kind of iffy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a MIG welder, I'm just gonna try to melt this end down so it won't split open anymore. And then I'm gonna get this section up to forge welding heat. I'm gonna hit it with the hammer and we're gonna move on from there. I'm gonna do everything I can to try to get it welded back up and we'll see what happens. get this handle rough assembled. Clean up these pieces. I'm gonna carve in my bird's head. I'm gonna get the overall dimensions figured out um, so that when I have my tang, I can drill the holes and we should be good to go. So I just cut off the excess. I'm gonna draw out the tang. And then I'm gonna start shaping this thing. We're you know, pretty much at length and it just needs to be shaped. Um, hammer in the bevels a little bit, hammer in the tip, hammer out the tang, I mean, we'll have a sword. I'm putting in a little bit of bevels on each side. I'm getting the curve right where I want it and I'm getting as straight as I can. It's coming along. So as you can see, the forge doesn't have a back cut out. So you, you can really only heat up a piece that's as long as the forge itself. Um, and that's really important for the quench because the whole piece has to be heated up evenly. So what I'm going to have to do with the sword is keep flipping it. Take it out, flip it, put it in, take it out, flip it, put it in, and just keep flipping until the whole thing's even. I've done this before, it works, but with a long, thin sword like this, you risk putting a bunch of kinks in it while you do that. So this is going to be pretty stressful to keep it straight, to get it all heated up evenly, and go into the oil. Pretty straight. It's got a little bit of kink. So this thing just came out of the quench. It's hard all the way down, but kind of to be expected from the flipping, um, it's a little bit harder in the center than it is on the ends. The center, uh, 65 is skating, 65 Rockwell. On the ends, it's biting just a little bit, and the whole thing is hard. So now the big question is, is it straight? All right, so there's a couple kinks in this. That's kind of to be expected. I think I can get them out in the temper. If you clamp some pins and then clamp it to an angle iron in the temper, it can straighten out a little bit. There's a little bit of tolerance in there. So I'm going to try that. And if after all the temper cycles it's still warped, well, you got to requench. Well, I just got the Shashka sword out of the temper cycle. I did three one hour cycles, two at 450 degrees, one at 500 degrees. Pretty flexible, but right now this is four pounds and I need to get it down under two. So we got a lot of meat to take out. We got to put the fuller in. It's time to grind for a long time. All right, so I still have a lot of grinding left to do, but now I'm checking out the ratio here on the steel. I want this dark core to be about a finger's width all the way down, and I want it revealed on both sides on this fullers, and I want that evenly all the way down. And it's gonna look so nice. Very clean, the edge is almost there. Um, so I'm gonna move on to the handle and I'm feeling really good. 
right now I'm tapping the tang here for the pommel to be screwed on. Now this wouldn't be possible if my tang wasn't softened. This is high carbon steel, so if I had heat treated all the way up, if I had quenched to the top of the tang and tempered, uh, this die would not have been able to really cut the steel. I would have had to put so much torque on this, I'd be worried about snapping the whole thing. So that's why you see me heat up the tang to soften up the steel so I can tap this end without being Superman, you know, without breaking this thing. Right now, everything is getting fit up. It's still really rough. I just gotta put the final grind on this thing, clean it up, polish it. It looks like a shashka now. But right now, with everything ground at about 90%, it looks great. Now, taking it to that 100%, I still might run into something, but the probability is pretty low. The only thing I saw was maybe a little tiny bit of flaking at like one spot in the fuller. But everything else seems really solid, seems really tight, no d -lambs. So the sword is all polished up and ready to go in the acid. Now, we don't have a big enough acid tank at first build, so we had to come back to my shop, Casa de Sage, and uh, get this thing dipped and see that pattern. So let's do it. All right, everybody, we're right here at the end of the sword build. It's been a long road. Last thing to do is to take out all the peaks and valleys and clean up the edge and give it a nice even flow and get it sharp. And then we're gonna go outside and see what it can do. All right, gang, we're all done. The sword is done. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Uh, I was worried there for a second, but it all came together. Let's put it to the test. Thanks for watching. Check it out. So uh, I uh, just ate the table. We're gonna give it another shot. All right, here we go. Gotta keep it level. I can do some pancakes and sausage and eggs right now. Oh my goodness.